Talk about how quickly the whole thing blew up. Take a look at this incredible time-lapse video from Alert California in the UC San Diego. This was taken from a building on Wilshire Boulevard. Look what happens there. Time-lapse video is that fire suddenly sets the entire hillside ablaze. Sandra, that's what happens when you have up to 100 mile an hour winds. Now what you can see is that the fire burns from right here over to right here in the opposite direction of the wind and i know the first thing people are going to say oh well that's a hill and though the general wind is blowing from right to left it creates a little eddy right there and that's why the fire is moving from left to right except i've seen this pattern over and over and over and identified it as a typical anomaly of plasma fire the wind blows one direction the underground electromagnetic filament that's moving through the ground it goes in the opposite direction of the wind from alert california in the uc san diego this was taken from a building on wilshire boulevard look what happens Time-lapse video is that fire suddenly sets the entire hillside ablaze. Sandra, that's what happens when you have up to 100 mile an hour wind boulevard. Look what happens there. Time-lapse video is that fire suddenly sets the entire hillside ablaze. From Alert, California, in the UC San Diego. This was taken from a building on Wilshire Boulevard. Look what happens there. Time-lapse video is that fire suddenly sets the entire hillside ablaze. From Alert, California, in the UC San Diego. This was taken from a building on Wilshire Boulevard. Look what happens there. Time-lapse video is that fire suddenly sets the entire hillside ablaze. Sandra, that's what happens when you have... You can see that the fire is burning the opposite direction of the wind from a still frame if you use your senses and trust your perception and use your information processor. This is from a video that I made quite a while ago titled Subterranean Fires in Brazil's Rainforest Burn 10 Times as Much in 2024 as in 2023. And you can see from this still frame image, you don't even need the time lapse video. This area is unburned. This area is burned, and the wind is going that direction. That means that the fire is about to go out, because that's what they call back burning, where you burn an area to remove all the fuel on the surface, so as the fire moves, it hits that unburned, I'm sorry, that area that where all the fuel is already burned up, and goes out. So if the wind is moving the fire and the fire is about to go that direction with the wind, it's about to go out because it's going to hit this area that's already been burned. The fire is moving this direction toward the unburned area, from the burned area toward the unburned area because it doesn't move across the surface of the land in the same direction as the wind. It moves through the ground. It is ground current electricity moving that direction from the burned area toward the unburned area while the wind is blowing that direction, the opposite direction. This can all be ascertained from a still frame image. And I have seen this type of image over and over and over, so much so that I know this is a persistent and repetitive pattern where you'll always see the smoke blowing back over onto the burned area. In typical firefighting, that's what they do on purpose to put the fire out. Let's just imagine for a minute, this fire is moving to, from left to right. They'll go and they'll burn a strip right here, a controlled burn, so that when the fire gets over to this spot, it goes out because it reaches that point where there's no fuel to burn because it's already been burned. That's called a back burn. That's what they say they're doing in some cases in California right now, trying to do back burns so that when the burning foliage, when the fire reaches the spot that's already been burned, it goes out. In a traditional fire, that works. In these fires, that doesn't work. Even if it's a 10-lane freeway, the fire goes right across the 10-lane freeway 
because it's moving through the ground underneath. That's why they have to keep saying, it must have been an ember. Jump that natural barrier that prevents the fire from continuing. In traditional firefighting, that barrier of the freeway or the burn strip that has no fuel puts the fire out. These fires move through the ground and in the opposite direction of the wind. You can see that from this still frame. But most people don't trust their own senses. They haven't been exercising their own thought processes throughout their whole life enough that they can trust them. That's why they say, well, should I believe this guy or that guy? Dane Wigington sounds so much smarter and he's so intelligent. He uses so many big words and when he says there's no electricity, maybe I should just believe him because I can't trust my own senses and my own thought processes. It's just a matter of who I should listen to and believe. Wildfires in Brazil's Pantanal wetlands so far this year have surged nearly tenfold compared to 2023. According to local media on Tuesday, official satellite data showed a 980% increase in Pantanal fires through June 5th, compared to the same time the year before. The figures have raised alarm as peak wildfire season approaches. They're the highest levels seen since 2020. Weak rains since late last year have disrupted seasonal flooding, making the region more vulnerable to fires. And in the Pantanal, the world's largest tropical wetland, the terrain makes those fires difficult to fight, according to Marcio Yule from Brazil's Environment Ministry. It's an area that's difficult to access with subterranean fires as well. These peat fires make combating them even harder. The latest surge in fires follows unusual blazes in late 2023, when El Nino delayed the rainy subterranean fires as well. These peat fires make combating them even harder. Fire. You heard him say subterranean fires. That means below ground. He said these peat fires. That is carbon rich, biodegraded, like, like material that's on its way to becoming coal. That's below the surface of the ground. These are underground fires. And when there's 10 times as many in 2024 as there was in 2023, if the world caught on to what's actually happening, society would unravel. People would come unglued, their animal instincts would take over, and they would all go into self-destruct mode. So thank God for the shills like Dane Wigington. And the useful tools that he finds to latch onto year over year, 10 times as much this year as there was last year, guess what? If we have 10 times as much next year, there ain't going to be another summer. I've been saying that for a while because I've been documenting plasma fire for six years. And each year that I've documented it, it has increased over the previous year a little bit until 2023. Last year, all of Canada was on fire. Greece. Uh, Chile. Hawaii, the amount of increase is exponential year over year. It is a logical, it is a conclusion one would come to through logical deductive reasoning and sound rationale that at this rate, you can plot it on a graph and determine how much longer we have on this earth. And that is why we're seeing a lot of the moves that we're seeing by the militaries of the world, they all want to be king of the ash heap, they know shit's about to go real, and when it does, they've all got their plans, and to fake a war, they're all cooperating, hand in hand, as they fake a war to keep the public distracted while the world burns. On that note, David Nino Rodriguez has a guy named Juan O'Savin on his show on a routine basis that predicted the Cuban Missile Crisis, and he said it over to... Okay, I started to get a little off topic there. Uh, this one's going to... I'm going to try and keep it short and topic specific to the fact that the fires burn in the opposite direction of the wind because they are subterranean fires. It is ground current, and that is ionic wind. Both the fire below the ground and the wind above the ground are both an electromagnetic phenomenon. And we got something else, another UFO captured in this in this uh, fire. And that's that's happened like five times at least already with these LA fires where people are catching UFOs in the video footage.
Oh, as that fire suddenly sets the entire hillside ablaze from Alert California and the UC San Diego. This was taken from a building on Wilshire Boulevard. Look what happens there. Time lapse video as that fire suddenly sets the entire hillside ablaze from Alert California and the UC San Diego. This was taken from a building on Wilshire Boulevard. Look what happens there. Time lapse video as that fire suddenly sets the entire hillside ablaze. Sandra, that's what happens when you have. Watch for the UFO to appear 10 degrees above the horizon line. Winds fueling this. It's, it's like a jet engine that's igniting these flames and spreading them all over. The, the way that that fire. You have up to 100 mile an hour winds fueling. I know you're going to say that was an ember. It just happened to be a super bright ember. Must have been five pounds in order to burn that bright for that long because this is a time lapse video. That thing was in the air for a lot longer than what you're seeing here. It's, it's like a jet engine that's igniting these flames and spreading them all over. The, the way that that fire blew up that quickly and literally died.